Yeah. Well, this is it's basically the same thing. It's just nice. a little newer, a little newer one. You get to see the whole picture. <laughs> Jeff Chen was uh, 
he came up to watch us, and me and Paul Jackson and Mr. Mosheri were all standing around him, and he was talking to someone, and he was, he just stopped talking for a second, and we were like, Jeff, hey Jeff, and we tried to get his attention, but, and we were three feet away from him, <laughs> and we couldn't get his attention, we were like, Jeff Chen, do you hear what we're saying? I mean, we're talking to you, but are you really listening? And he could not hear us. This had have gone on for over five minutes. Talking to him, but he couldn't hear a word we were saying. So, so Jeff Chen used to always talk and never listen to words. <laughs> Here, uh, it was his first trip at State Me this year, and uh, he's going to have a 200-star relay, and uh, we, were, we were really counting on him to do good. And he, he dove in there and significantly had his best time, and the reason that we got 12th and not 13th was because of his excellent performance at prelims. So before I you know get into the funny part, I just let him acknowledge that. Um, uh, this is Matt Rose, I kind of probably gave it away, but um, <laughs> on, our, uh, on one of the bus rides home from, uh, I think it was, I don't even remember, you, no, I don't remember me, but um, I think it was Sagan actually, and uh, but we, we all, you know, we all eat, you know, snacks and stuff on the way home, and uh, someone in the front row was hungry, I think it was a freshman, and uh, they, they, they called back, uh, you know, Hey, uh, did anyone know where the Nutrigrain Nutrigrain bars are? Nutrigrain bars are. And uh, Matt Rosick, um, quite abruptly, uh, answered the question. And uh, you know, he, he knew where the Nutrigrain grains were. Uh, God bless that no one ever tried to get them. But uh, Matt Rosick definitely knew where they were. So, so uh, Matt Rosick gets to where the Nutrigrain bars were. Bauman, Sean, a bunch of other guys, and they just called themselves that. They were these big kids. No, they weren't fat. <laughs> no. So they were swimmers, so most of them were, and um, they convinced this poor freshman who just came to America, who could barely speak English, to say some things to people that he thought were completely innocent. But I, I'll, I'll just never forget the things that he said, and they were not so innocent. <laughs> So um, if anyone wants to know what he said, you can probably ask him, but uh, Ricky Landeros, he gets uh, the Crazy Mexican Award. <laughs> and the Chamber's doorman wrote a word go to uh, John Martone and Matt Vinicelli. <laughs> But uh, 
as you can see, I, I, he gets a tiny tip of work. Skeptics, you know I always have some music I listen to. Well, I went through a pretty heavy Dylan stage. <laughs> and uh, I listen to The Hurricane a lot. It's a good song. And this one person I go to school every morning, it, we, we always listen to it. And uh, there's one line in the song that goes, and Miss Patty Valentine just nodded her head. And uh, Nikhil Oak, just like, <laughs> 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 he was nodding his head just like Patty. And, and Chris Chambers got a real kick out of it, so did all of us. And uh, so Nikhil Oak gets the Patty Valentine award. <laughs> This next individual, I have pretty much known my whole life. He's always lived in my sub, and I've always known him pretty well. And uh, once I got my license, I kind of felt obligated to drive him to school and to practice every morning. And um, although I drive and you know, pick him up around 5 in the morning, it seems like whenever I was there, the light was on, but nobody was home. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to Andrew Chang, the, the light's on, but nobody's home more. <laughs> He's the kind of kid who the whole swim team will be sitting there and just sort of running to give instructions, and all of a sudden you'll hear it screaming coming down from where the divers are. And everyone doesn't really know what's going on, but we look down there, and this poor junior is being really railed at. <laughs> and so I'm giving um, Chris Rousseau the Marion Likes to Rip on Me Award. <laughs> Eventually he got tired and he didn't, you know, he didn't listen to the part that when you get tired, you kind of put the ball down and rest. Well, he, he just insisted on treading and eventually just started sinking. And he, sunk, and he sunk to the bottom of the pool. And he, so he was trying to tread on the bottom of the pool with his basketball. You know, he was down there for about 30 seconds until he, you know, he was losing oxygen. He, he, jumped, he dropped the ball and jumped off the bottom of the pool and he uh, um, survived. <laughs> and uh, that's how the, the Nickname Deepwater came about. <laughs> People have been asking me that lately, and ever since the nickname was kind of stuck. And um, you know, that's half the award, but the other half is a serious award, meaning that um, Dustin swam his freshman year, but then he, he stopped swimming sophomore and junior year, and he came back to senior year. And not only did he improve um, extremely as a swimmer, I mean, he went from, I mean, he must have dropped six, eight seconds since 53, but he, he really improved as, you know, he, he's really became a just a great guy to be around, and um, I remember in freshman year, we didn't really get along as well as we should have, but now I consider, you know, we're pretty good friends, and we get along real well, and he, he really, he, he really matured, and we really, we really appreciate him having, uh, being on the team. So we're going to give uh, Dustin Water, or Dustin, <laughs> Dustin, <laughs> Dustin Deepwater Noasek, the Deepwater and Comeback Kid Award. <laughs> Um, this this goes, it's a kind of hyphenated award like my previous one. Um, 
when, when Greg Larkin started swimming when he was little, um, he'd always, because Mrs. Larkin would pick me up sometimes, he'd always ride in the car wearing nothing but his Speedo and, and goggles. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was extremely funny because we'd always sit, you know, it, it was summer, but we'd be wearing, you know, shirt and, coat and you know, pants and, and sandals, but Greg would just be wearing his Speedo and his goggles, and, and Mrs. Larkin's 88, like, I don't know, minivan. And, and but when Greg would swim, he, you know, obviously wear his goggles, but um, even after he still wear his goggles, he'd wear them in the shower, he'd wear them on the way home. And it's as if they were like his contacts, his normal glasses. And and that, that summer, Mr. O'Brien gave Craig the Goggle Man Award, and he also received it the year after. And but ever since then, he kind of stopped this this tradition of wearing his goggles all, all over. But disregarding that fact, um, I think I think we still have to give, give Greg Larkin the Goggle Man Award. And that's the first time. That's the first time. Here's the second. Um, and also, this is the tradition part. Um, um, when freshmen join this team, it's ex an extreme, um, not only adjustment, but it's it's really hard to um, understand things and, and how to, you know, adapt to this lifestyle. Waking up early and not getting much sleep and working extremely hard in the pool while balancing your grades and your social life and everything. And you know, but Greg Larkin seemed to not only balance it well, but he seemed to do everything perfectly. Um, he never. Um, you know, asked any dumb questions or, or did anything out of the ordinary to um, to create a negative attention toward themselves. So um, we decided to give Greg Larkin the Goggle Man slash Perfect Freshman Award. <laughs> Chris Thomas would always carry a frisbee, and it was good because everyone always wanted to play frisbee. And he always had a frisbee, and he's really good at frisbee. So I'm giving Chris Thomas the frisbee award. <laughs> and uh, there's so many people around there. <laughs> around, around the buffet, and, like nobody could get any pizza, but John Chunk is. He got a lot of pizza. <laughs> let's, just, let's just leave it at that. He, he ate a lot of pizza. <laughs> so we give Dad Chung the Pizza Hut Award. <laughs> Who was very tall, very beastly, and very, very hairy. <laughs> He was from Russia, and he fought a bunch of bad guys, and, and he looks just like, just like this kid. Uh, the next part is uh, Pumbaa, uh, which is a character from uh, Lion King, yeah. And he looks similar to Pumbaa, too. <laughs> yeah, um, the next part, when I, at my uh, overnight party, I walked into, um, I walked into the back room, which was probably a mistake in the first place, but I walked into the back room. <laughs> And I see in the bed two get the well, they look like to me. Like, I, 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 it looked to me like I saw one guy roll over on a big teddy bear. Uh, that, that big... that big teddy bear uh, was this kid, actually. And uh, so the fourth part, um, penguin, because he also looks like a penguin. So, um, Brandon Northrup, you were like the man of all names, and I give you the Brandon Northrup Award because you'd earned, you'd earned it, man. <laughs> grown to grown to love throughout this year. Um, I, I met him last year at a middle school meet, and he was living in he was living on the Athens side of town, and I pretty much convinced him to swim for Troy because uh, I think a lot of the success he wouldn't have had if he went to Athens and. He, he decided to go to Troy, which was really good, and then he played polo for us. And as I got to know him, um, let's just say that he's the biggest character I've definitely ever met. Um, for those who went to state meet, uh, all the all the stories about his dog Shotzi, which is, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I don't think I ever I don't think I ever laughed hard in my life. Um, yeah, well, well, Shotzi is, is one of. Uh, Chachi is an old dog, and, and uh, 
one time, one time Shotzi was walking and his, his, his back two legs don't work, so they kind of crack. And he was, he was walking, and, and Jeff, I think he, he was walking, he was getting dressed, he accidentally kicked him over, but he didn't notice it, he fell over. And, and when, when Jeff put his clothes back on, he saw, he saw Jeff shaking his legs like this. He was trying to get up, but he couldn't, because he only had two legs. Anyways, that's just an anecdote, but um... <laughs> In fact, I don't think I'd ever seen Mr. Ryan or Mr. Mary laugh as far as I can tell that story. And, uh, the, but on a serious note, I mean, although he's only you know, 15, I have honestly never seen anyone work as hard and swim in my life. I mean, he would, he would do sets that would just boggle the mind how hard he'd work and how fast, and not only how fast he'd go, but how he'd be able to hold on, hold this rate and this, this work ethic. And, uh, and he'd swim, like we'd do like a set of like six 500s, and he'd just kill everyone. And uh, he'd come out, and his his whole body was red. I mean, <laughs> and and uh, I don't, he just, I don't know, it was like a freak of nature or something. <laughs> <laughs> but during all during all of this, uh, he, we were trying to think of a, a, na a nickname for the kid, and uh, I was everyone pretty much was unsuccessful thinking of a name except for himself. He kind of self entitled himself Super Drews, <laughs> and um, and it, it's more than just um, I guess it's more than just a nickname, it's more of a persona, being that he's probably the most interesting character you'll ever meet. I mean, when you guys, you guys should meet the guy before, before he's gone, he was fresh. But anyway, um, and I, I think the term that was coined, you know, Super Drews, extremely fitting. So uh, Jeff Drews gets the Super Drews War. <laughs> And so we made up the Captain's Award, which we're giving for someone who is dedicated and shows uh, either very possibly will become a great leader one day or already is a great leader. And um, the other captains are going to say a little bit about this kid. And... Go ahead. Um, yeah, this, this, he's a junior, and uh, we, we really needed him at state meet because he was swimming off three relays. And uh, our, our success was pretty much all pivoted upon upon his uh, performance, and he really came through. And uh, especially in the four hundred relay, where he dropped like two seconds, and uh, a lot of really a lot of pressure was put him on this year. He had a rough time last year at state meet, and uh, and I think he just he was kind of down himself in the beginning of the year. But when we really needed him him the most, he really stepped up, and that was really important. Uh, he always come through in the times we needed him. So like. We needed to get a state cut. Yeah, hop on the back of the relay, get get the state cut, no problem. I mean, he's always, he's, he's the gamer. He always came out big for us. And um, we all as captains agreed that we should give uh, Chris Thomas the captain's award for being dedicated, hardworking, and really stepping up. Part of their legacy that that uh, the, the five seniors when they left I said you will be electing what happens in the future and they took it very very seriously and they elected these four fine gentlemen to be captain and I think it's been a, a tremendous year a, a very very solid year I think if you look on the back of the um, the form where it says that how many personal bests we've had that's that's probably unheard of you also look at it before I give these awards out you got to know that they've done a little bit more than just um, an average year when you think of it, and, and I, I said this at the OAA coaches meeting the other night, it was really interesting that I said that, that uh, um, every single swimmer on the team could swim all four strokes competitively and I would feel very comfortable about putting them in any event, in all events. And you, I could see mouths drop, you know, like what in, in heaven's name you know, are you talking about? And I think, um, I don't think a lot of you understand the magnanimity of that to get 36 individuals to be able to perform at all four strokes. And it took to the end. Took to the last two weeks, and uh, Lee Johnson came through for us. So it's I'm very very pleased, and I'll talk about him later. But um, the three things that I tried to accomplish in the be in the beginning of the year were I, I tried to establish balance. I wanted to balance. I wanted a balanced team. I didn't I didn't think that we had any superstars, but I had new. I did know that kids could step up if they had to, 
And believe me, our four captains did as did the other seven seniors. They took it upon themselves. There was no hazing. There was no harassment. There was nothing like that. The kids felt comfortable. These freshmen understood that they had a responsibility, and they 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 took it very seriously. They they um, were scared when they didn't show up on time to practice. They knew they had the answer to me. And if that if I'm the worst person that they have to answer to in their life, they're pretty lucky. Okay, but I, I still understand I'm quite intimidating, and I intend to be. Um, I wanted them competitive. And if you look at the if you look at the 13 dual meets we had this year, we never won or lost any meet by any more any less than 20 points, except for Gross Point North and uh, and uh, the uh, Grand Blank meet at the end. But those were already decided, and we were told because we were going for cuts. But if you look at the meets, losing by 15 or 17 points to Brother Rice. Uh, losing by 15 points to UAD and uh, losing by 10 or 15 points to Rochester Adams, bringing them down the last three relays, all three of whom who finished in the top five in the state. You're looking at a very, very competitive team, getting second in the league. There's no no easy shortcoming when you consider that we had to beat the number five team, Groves and, and uh, Lasser, to, to finish ahead of that. The other thing that I wanted, the third thing that I wanted was proficiency and I wanted performance. And I wanted to, I knew what was going to happen this year. I knew that these 11 seniors would leave and that we would be left with seven seniors, or seven juniors, 12 sophomores, and 10 freshmen. And these young men would have to be seasoned and ready to perform by next year. What they do between now and next November is really going to decide how much success we continue to have. And I have no, no way not putting pressure on you. I am putting, you have a tough tough act to follow. It is a tough act to follow. And the only way you're going to do it is not by wishing it. It's going to be getting in and doing something. Nobody can stand still. If you think you are, then you're, you're living an illusion. It's kind of like a parent saying, my kid wouldn't do drugs or my kid wouldn't drink. Any parent that really thinks that, you got some real thinking to do because it can and does happen. But I think that what you need to look at is your sons have come through a, a program this year where they have, been, they have been disciplined and they willingly do so. There are only 30, 40 kids in the school that can discipline themselves out of 2,000 to do this thing, and, and they have the admiration of the faculty. We had 20 faculty members show up and look at that on faculty night, and, they, and I got from two or three of them, God bless you, what a great group of kids. And I still continue to hear that. You know, Mr. Hosang this morning, it's good to see him bald. They're good, doing a good job. And he's a sophomore, he, he knows he can spot on sight who they are. And I think those are things, as a parent, I think you should sit here and be extremely proud of these kids because you know where they are. When they're dead tired, that's a good sign. When they come home to sleep on Friday night, you know where they are. There's a lot of parents who two, three in the morning don't know where their kids are. You know, and they know they have to get up at seven o'clock the next morning to, to train, and they know that they have to be responsible to me. So the balance, the competitiveness, the proficiency, and the performance, those are the three things I demanded of it. Notice in that there was no such thing as winning. There's no such thing as being top five in the state. There's no such thing as that, because if they perform to their best, I'm the happiest guy in the world. So best is a relative term, and these kids, when you see the personal best tonight, how many kids, 93% of the kids did their personal best at the league meet? You know, it's exactly where they should have done, and the others did that at the state meet, and they did it where they should have done it. And uh, it's a testament to you because I, I, I deal the hand that I'm dealt. You know, when you agree to let them come out for swimming, and you agree to, to what's involved. And I know there were some mornings where, you know, people got up and they said, why in God's name is this man doing this to his, you know, why are they doing it? You see tonight why. When you see these four seniors up here and they're giving the awards and there's a camaraderie and the familyishness that there is, this is something that other teams only wish they could have. They only wish it. And you have it. So uh, what I'm asking you to do is to, I, I've been blessed in my life, and, and I don't know what it is, but I really um, consider myself want to be a very, very lucky person. I have a, a team in the summer that, that is like a family. I have, I have grown to love you. And, and in two years, it's, you know, I'm a hard sell. And, and you have weathered the storm. You have, you have my admiration. All 40 of you have my admiration. To watch the four, the four divers this year just keep performing and performing, getting better and better and better. And looking at that and saying, you know, we did them justice. I have a big thank you, and I think you, I think the swimmers know this, but I think the parents do. I have two of the best coaches that you could ever, ever possibly want to have. I am so blessed. All three of us are in the building. So, I mean, there's a triad there. If a kid misses practice, all three of us are on him. I mean, Mr. Moseri's walk up to him, he turns around, Mr. Marion's there, and then I'm there to the, the, the final blow. So there's, 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 some, there's some things, but I want to tell you something, that when you saw the program this year step up, 
you saw those divers increase, and, and that's due to one person, and that's Mr. Al Marion, and I think that, that he has done just a superb job, and what's really nice is that he feels comfortable enough that he could come onto the deck, and if somebody's doing something wrong, he'll correct them. You know, I can't see everything, and Joe can't see everything, but he feels comfortable enough as a swimming coach and a diving coach that we can work both ways. When he had to go away during break, I was allowed to coach the kids, and, and I think we were able to move. It's the camaraderie. I think the kids sense it. The kids sense it. And if there's that working thing that, that we're all working together and we're all going to get the same thing, I think that's why we had the success we had. I think some of the kids at the state meet were disappointed. You know, I said, well, we didn't get top eight. We were ranked seventh. We did this. I don't worry about rankings. I worry about swimming. When I saw Paul Jackson step up in that 400 freestyle relay after swimming eight times in, in two days and he was dead tired, he went 47-2-9 and missed the school record by three one-hundredths of a second, I cried. It was the best thing I've ever seen. I mean, he just stepped up and he said, "The heck with the individuals. Let's get going." And, and uh, he was. I would. He made me very proud. But that's the type of things they are. We have some very unselfish people. Mr. Masseri gives up his time. He's he's a faculty manager and he gives up his time. He comes into the pool. He is superb with the kids. He is superb with them. He, they they respect him. They admire him. And I I have grown to just uh, admire his technique and his. Is uh, we wouldn't be half the team without Mr. Marion and Mr. Masseri. So I'd like you two gentlemen to come up and help me now. We're going to give out the awards, but I think you owe them a tremendous amount. Of These are our two coaches, in case you didn't know that, that all these three people on the deck, but I, I just want you to see them and, and admire them as much as I do. Um, Chris Thomas has some awards, that, and uh, he's going to bring up the juniors that are going to give, uh, they have some awards for the seniors before we give out the uh, um, letters, okay? Chris, why don't you bring your juniors up? Well, we have a couple of uh, senior gifts and uh, captain, <laughs> captain favorite plate awards, so... All right, first I have uh, this uh, favorite plate. It's for Kevin Larkin. <laughs> no, all right. It's just he complains like he he always gets up before me, so he starts talking then. Sometimes someone will just like cut off right in front of what he's saying, and he always complains about it. He's like, man, I always get cut off. And I'm saying something really important, and then someone just cuts me off right in the middle of it. So I give Kevin Larkin the cut off award. <laughs> Award. Um, it's kind of a tradition to have like parties at this kid's house. I think it's for the past like nine years or something. They have Mark Decker or the Decker family has had uh, parties at his house. So we give Mark Decker the Animal House Award. <laughs> This year, a particular captain got pretty excited, and he was jumping on the pool deck at prelims, like, yeah, yeah. And some kid walked by, and he turned around and drilled this kid right in the face. <laughs> so we give Paul Jackson the Rocky Balboa award. <laughs> Todd Webster. Uh, you might remember a while ago, uh, there was a train wreck. I believe it was by Adams. Well, Todd Webster, he heard about it, and he was like, I'm going to go see it. So he gets in his car, and he goes see it. He goes, I'm going to walk on the tracks. So he goes, he walks on the tracks. Well, he steps, and he, he trips and falls, and he hurts his ankle. So that kills his polo season, but it's all right, because he comes back for swim season. So we give Todd Webster the train wreck award. <laughs> people's attention he's, he'll be like hey guys you guys and, and everyone will just keep talking and uh, okay we also got him some motion lotion 
Just, uh, well, it's like a swimming thing. You put it on before <laughs> you put it on before you swim, and it's supposed to make you faster. But we also got him an air horn and three flares, just in case. <laughs> yeah, <it's attention. laughs> sleepover after lead meets this year, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. And this kid's just sitting there, and he comes up to me and Brandon, he's like, you, you think if we go out right now and like to Birmingham, we can find some girls or something? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like 3 in the morning, we're trying to explain all that. Nobody's like, out shopping at 3 in the morning. <laughs> you think there'll be anyone out there? I'm like, oh, please don't. So at uh, a particular store, we got him some suddenly stud pills <laughs> to help him out a little bit. And the other one, this poster here, I have um, a physics class second hour, and he has a physics class first hour. And he's always in there like like a half hour after second hour already starting, still taking his test. And he's like, oh man, how do I do this and everything? So I tell him, Dustin, you need to study harder. You need to learn this stuff. So this is a poster of, um, I don't know if we can, I can't open it. It's a poster of our, a particular Attractive young woman <laughs> <laughs> pulling some books saying study hard. <laughs> <laughs> Is Matt Rozak? Um, uh, oh, yeah, we got him some stuff from The Simpsons because he likes Simpsons and Animal Crackers because they're cool. Because, <laughs> um, um, oh, yeah, because he likes them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and this is um, some good stuff that we know he'll enjoy. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin really likes Krispy Kreme donuts, so we kind of went out and got him some. <laughs> <laughs> this one is uh, for Dan Wyskowski, and uh, like the uh, Pair Play Award already explains, Paul Carrier just kind of wanders, just, he wanders. So we got him a, a stuffed sheep. Cause that's what he's looking for. <laughs> and, um, and in case he gets lost in his uh, expedition of compass. <laughs> uh, this next one's for Rodrigo. Um, I think we got some bubbles for him too. Um, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> And we got him some donuts too, because he likes donuts. Because like he go up to like just random girls and say these weird things, and they'd always laugh, and they, they'd always like, oh, it's hot. <laughs> Before the meet and stuff, and he always uses these like phrases, and we don't know where he gets these phrases from. But 
not a lot of us understand them, but we know they're big words. <laughs> so we got him like this dictionary with all these phrases in it. And we he also likes Bruce Springsteen. And uh, it's like his idol, and he wants to be like him. So we got him a, a Star Spangled like uh, headband for him to wear. Thank <laughs> you. 
Rivers Power Swimmers. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Andrew, you've got to step up a little bit. Hey, Andrew, why are you doing this time when you should be doing this? And it's almost like the light goes on, oh, he's looking at me now, I better go faster. And, and uh, I'll tell you something, between this year and last year, he's gotten stronger, his upper body strength has increased, and he needs to now increase his leg strength, and is, and is just a little bit better in uh, how he performs on the, uh, on the end of the, uh, the sets. He does very well in the beginning, runs out of gas, so a little bit in the endurance. But I'll tell you something, his breaststroke this year, magnificent. He's increased his, his, like I said, his strength and his speed. Um, he swum all the events, like the 200 free, the 200 IM, the 50 free. Um, he doesn't like it when I put him in the 100 fly, but um, he knows that, so I put him in the 100 fly a lot. So, uh, <laughs> but but uh, we have a good saying that he's, he works hard, he knows what he has to do, and I'm, I'm pleased that, that he's made such great strides. I'm looking forward to even a better season next year. Andrew, congratulations on a good season. Mike Jackson, Action Jackson Jr. There's a, um, I really feel that uh, uh, Mike in his, in his sophomore year has, has had a tremendously good learning season. Last year he enjoyed a tremendous amount of success as a freshman and uh, he came on like gangbusters in the league meet. And I think he was expecting to do the same thing in the league meet this year. And as it was, he did his best 200 freestyle time ever and just didn't quite make the, the um, the time that he had last year in the 500, only to find out that you know he's fighting sickness and illness, and never once said I'm sick, or never once said. And they don't. These kids do not manufacture excuses. They just they expect to do the best every time they get in the water, and they're going to swim like it. So uh, I, I know the competition between uh, he and Kevin is very good, and competition is a very good thing. It will produce some desired results, at least as far as Joe and Al and I are concerned. It'll produce some great results, and uh, I think that um, he's gotten wiser and he's gotten smarter and he's gonna train better. And I think that that whole three combinations right there will produce a, a much, much better junior, a much um, more sophisticated and a junior and a person that's willing on to take on that work ethic. So uh, I'm very pleased that your season this year, I'm ple very pleased with 200, and uh, I know that with a, a little bit more, we'll have that 500 down next year. Congratulations, Mike, great season. <laughs> Lee Johnson, come on up here, Lee. There is no success, and I mean that. They, there's a lot of talk that goes on in the locker room. There's a lot of talk that goes on sitting by the, you know, with their donuts in the morning after morning practice. There's a lot of talk that goes on before practice and when I'm not around. And if that talk were negative, if that talk were destructive, we wouldn't have had the season we had this year. They made the commitment, they said, this is our coach, this is our coaching staff, we're pleased with that, they give 100%, we'll give 100%. And to a man, all 11 of them, I can stand, I would, I would stand proudly and say to anyone, any teacher, any school, I find them to be of the highest quality, the best caliber, and, and the best leaders that I think uh, I've, I've seen in a long, long time. And I think uh, it's a tribute to your parents of how you raise your children and the demands that you make on them. But it's also, I think, a combination of the fact that they feed off of one another, that all 11 of these kids, and I think Dustin felt it this year, and I know the seniors feel it about how important it is to be a we rather than an I. And in this sport, you can swim. You're in the lane by yourself. It's your time. But you know overall it's going to benefit the team. So um, as, as Paul Carrier starts it off, remember, these are, this is their last time they're going to be walking across this stage. And uh, this is their last chance to tell them how much we appreciate them. So as he comes up, I want you to know this young man has got um, – a lot of talent that I haven't tapped, but he he had himself a lead meet and 57 in the fly. He you could just see the expression like you could have lit up the city with the expression on his face when he swam the 57 fly. I could I mean we could have lit up Detroit for a week. It was great. And I, that, um, I am uh, I have last year um, uh, I was worried you know that that uh, when John came out it, it, there were some things that some issues that we had about training and methods and stuff like that and I think. Over the summer, he's had a chance to think and to talk to some other people, and he came back this year with the idea in his mind that he was going to give the best effort he could. Well, at the league meet, he went 103.9 in the breast, which is his lifetime best, and he got out and he said, you know, it, it didn't qualify, missed qualification by that much, but um, he still gave his best effort. He knew he was on the state meet team. He went his 28.9 breaststroke in the in the uh, 200 medley relay, got us quali we were qualified 15th in the state. It didn't bring us back the next day. We went 140.6, but. He still gave his best effort. What I was more than effort was pleased about was that once he realized he didn't qualify, they could make you know Shakespearean asides, 
and so he just to see if I get a reaction or if I'm listening to him. So I'd say, all right, we're going to do 100 of these or we'll do 40 of these or something to see if he's paying attention. But um, he had a lot of kids, and he is, admittedly, if you look at the times and stuff, he's not necessarily one of those, quote, stars. And, and there aren't any on the team. They're all good, solid swimmers. But he, you would see him after practice talking with the sophomores and talking with the freshmen. You'd see him um, trying to give advice and go, don't worry about that. What's more important is what's coming down the line. Look at this. And those are the, the little quiet ways that people leave. Because like I said, I'm not in the locker room. I don't know what goes on. And a lot of the leadership kids looked up to him. And I think that's one of the great signs that, that, that he's got the idea, I can still work my butt off and my jar is full. I'm doing the best effort I can. And if the effort's good enough, he's standing up here today very proud because he knows he's been a positive role model. He's been a great leader. He's put in his best effort, and he's had a, a very phenomenal run of four years here. My only regret is that I didn't know him for the other two years and didn't have the opportunity to coach him. But the two years that I had with him were very pleasant, very enjoyable, and uh, he's a, a remarkable person. Uh, the nicest the compliment that I received is that he's going to, uh, in the fall, hopefully be a member of my alma mater, the University of Illinois, so I'll have somebody that's an Illini. Even though we'll get pummeled by Michigan, we'll still have to. I take that abuse every every time Michigan plays or Michigan State plays Illinois, so congratulations, Mark, and, and best of luck to how things go for you. Paul Jackson, come on up here. I still, Paul, I still remember Paul, and this is very hard for me emotionally because I remember him as a seven and eight year old coming out where he, he had trouble doing the fly one arm at a time, you know, and it was, it was it, he couldn't put his leg kick right. You know, he had size size 15 feet. And he was seven years old, you know. And, it was, it was, and looking at this, you're going, you know, it's going to be there. You know, it's all going to all the cosmic tumblers are going to click into place, and he's going to, and it did. In high school, he's. He's asserted himself, he loves uh, water polo and he loves the aquatic sports. Um, he's a positive promoter for the sport. He uh, works on kids on a positive way. Here, you do it by my example. I'm gonna work my butt off, I expect you to do the same thing. And I think leadership like that doesn't come along often. You know, when you do, you have to play on it and take advantage of it. And we're very blessed with these seniors this year. And uh, I know he's a little bit disappointed at the state meet, but I know his last swim, the one he's going to remember his whole life, is that he came three one hundredths of a second from that from his from the uh, school record. But he had the third fastest time in the state in the hundred freestyle. He led off that four hundred freestyle relay. And when I saw the forty seven two nine pop up. I'm thinking that, good, your last swim is the one you'll remember your whole life. And I really, really am pleased with how he was a captain this year, how he performed, how he was a model for the other uh, swimmers. And, and I have nothing but praise for him and his ability. And uh, I, I thank you for the, the years. And I just think I'm, I'm pleased that you're going to swim this summer. But I, I think Troy High is losing a true leader. And uh, I, I know you'll be a tough act to replace. But congratulations, Paul. Rodrigo, come on up here. All week long before the league meet, I could see that this kid was going to swim. Mr. Masseri and I would talk, and I'd say, what do you see Rodrigo? What do you see Rodrigo? Go? And it was, it was great to watch. He had, he went uh, 546. Five, um, if, anybody, if anybody on the team has a, you know, a right to be, I, I don't want to say bitter in the sense, but if things didn't go right for him his senior year, and usually I'm a big proponent of, you know when it's your senior year, everything goes right, but I'll tell you something. Um, if anybody could take lemons and make lemonade, it's this young man. Um, he, he could have had, he had literally everything going for him and uh, against him in, in November and December. He comes in with mono. The boy guy's diagnosed with mono. We're, we're, he's one morning a week, then two mornings a week. We're going to go back gradually to get him in. But literally, he was going to school, and, and, uh, and I remember his math teacher, and Mrs. Larkin was talking about record and, and his math, and he says, well, he, you know, he faltered a little bit. What well, guy is mono? You know, and, and he's here, he's swimming, and he's doing the thing, and it took him a while to recover. And, and by the 500 at the league meet, he, he knew he was going to give it his best effort, but he just hadn't done, he just didn't, his strength hadn't recovered enough. But in the 200, he had his personal best missed qualifying by two tenths of a second in the 200 free. Just missed it. Just missed in the 400 free and qualifying in the, in the, in the 100 free. And then um, in the 500, didn't, didn't do his personal best, but had uh, darn close to it. And when you think of all that's, that he had to come through, any other kid, I really believe this, 
it had been in another program or another attitude, he would have given it up, folded it up, and said, you know, I'm not going to do it. It's you know, it's just too hard. But he's not that way. He went 48.86 on his on the 400 freestyle relay at the at the uh, state meet, and you could see it as happy. He got out of that pool and said, I know I've done my best. And when everything went wrong, and he turned around and made it right, to me that's the epitome. Parents, this is somebody that you your kids should emulate. You know that when things get down, you turn around and you make them right. You know, and, and I think it's a positive model for for everybody. And I think that you should be proud of him. I think his parents should be proud of him. And I know we are proud of him. So, Kevin, congratulations! Great season. <laughs> Dan Leskowski. The nicest thing um, I think I think maybe you can tell them something from now on. Okay, that, that might be a lot of jobs. All right, I'll just call these individuals off. They can come out up and get their words, and we'll keep the program right on moving. First off, Mark Decker. Here. Paul Jackson. Rodrigo Landeros. Kevin Larkin. Daniel Oskowski. Dustin Nowacek. Next is David Allen. Andrew Chang. Michael Jackson. Stanislav Shaminsky. John Martones. Raymond Miller. Nikhil Oak. <laughs> Brian Rowe. <laughs> and I must say, he's the only individual I know that knows what every flag in that hallway in the Commons what country it stands for, which is unbelievable. There's 67 flags there, and he knows every one of them. <laughs> I know I've tested him. Uh, Matt Benatelli. Makes me laugh just saying his name. I know you know what he's doing. <laughs> Jeff Drews. <laughs> Alok Ezithachum. Chris Slavin. Yeah. 
Jonathan Thomas. And I also would like to thank, I also would like to thank all the parents and swimmers. It's been a remarkable season, and I thank all of you for all your support and the team. It's been great working with you. Thank you very much. Uh, relay, uh, Paul Jackson, Chris Thomas, Todd Webster, and Kevin Larkin. Will you come up here, please? So we'll find out in late June whether or not they become the, the minimum qualification is, uh, I think, 316, and they went 314, 42, and then uh, the automatic is 310. So we're right at dead center. So it was, there's hope that we'll make that. Okay, congratulations. <laughs> um, I'm going to give uh, a couple of uh, special awards. First one I'm going to give is the most improved. This is voted on by the, by the team. Uh, it, it's very. All three of the coaches unanimously concur with this, and uh, I would like this young man to come up because you've seen him as a, a, an award recipient, you've seen him as a scholar athlete. Alok, come on up and get your most approved award. The swimmers realize how much effort this young man put into his swim program this year and how much success he got. And I think that he reflects the entire team. I could give a most approved award to every single kid on this team. But the, the kids realize that even though they work and they've made special gains, that Alok has worked hard at, at that and, and that he deserves that award. So congratulations to you, Alok. Good job. My next award is the uh, Troy High Booster Association Award. And, uh, this is presented annually by the Boosters, and this is to a, a young man. Like I said before when I was talking about him, a lot of his leadership is done in very quiet ways, whether it's people coming over to his house uh, for four successive years to have his mother have the nightmare of having 35 young men at their house. Um, I think this award goes mainly also to his parents as much as it goes to, uh, as goes to the young man. His dedication, his hard work, his positive attitude is a tremendous reflection of not only um, his parents and himself, but his versatility and his willingness. He arranged all of the music. He set up um, things beforehand, not only having to do his warm-up, but oftentimes having to go right out of the, the uh, Star Spangled Banner to put his horn down, to go up and swim the 200 freestyle. Um, his, his leadership and his, his contribution to the team is very much understated but very appreciated by his teammates. So the Troy, this year's uh, Outstanding um, Troy Boosters Award this year goes to Mark Decker. Um, we have uh, a Coaches Award this year, and uh, this Coaches Award goes to a young man that had anticipated that he was going to have a, a big season, and uh, like I said, there was some tragedy that got in the way in November and December, and he could have hung his head, and I, I think that this young man is a model example of when things go bad, you turn around and you make them as good as you can. Uh, Kevin Larkin has my respect and my admiration for the way he handled himself this year, and for the fact that he never, ever, ever gave up. He never used it as an excuse, he never complained, he said, I'll do what I can, I'll give as much as I can, and I'll, I'll uh, We'll, we'll let it go from there. And, and at the end of the year, that 48-87 was his best swim that he had. He knew that when he got out of the pool, he had done his best. He was exhausted, he was tired, but in my mind, um, proved to the people that were there, and by the way, a lot of you weren't there at the state meet, which you should have been. Um, the, uh, the, uh, and, and I think so, if you want to be there, you should see what it's like, because some of you last year, but he showed us that, that what hard work does and where he has to draw back and rely on his his resources he was able to do it. Kevin, come on up and get your coaches award. Um, Pat Wolfenberg Award. This is a, this, along with this plaque, this person's name will go up on the wall in the, in the uh, Commons area, which is uh, underneath the flags that Brian Rowe can name. 
Um, that, uh, but the, the nice distinguishing factor is he will be the only person in, um, in uh, Troy High history to this date that has ever been up there twice. This young man uh, represents and by his teammates was voted uh, in terms of dedication and respect and admiration for the Wolfenberg family, which we're getting away from. It's been a while since they've been here. Um, Mr. Degmar tried to talk to Mr. Wolfenberg to come and give this award, because I think if you see it, and we'll work at that next year, but if you see what this, this man and his, his wife and his family meant to this school and how much they've contributed, I think you'll understand why the dedication that, the, that this young man gives to the sport, not only to, to swimming, but aquatic sports in general, and the dedication he gives to the team that there's nothing he wouldn't sacrifice for the team, and he did make some sacrifices this year for the team. So in terms of the dedication of Pat Wolfenberg, the most dedicated award, Paul Jackson. <laughs> our um, Senior of the Year and our Cult of the Year are one and the same. Um, it's, it's my pleasure to say that, that uh, this young man accepts this award because all of the other seniors on the team have earned this as well. Um, he epitomizes the leadership. He epitomizes that, that we have so many good leaders here that, that uh, but the um, swimmers have recognized that Todd has put in a great deal of effort into swimming. He's, he's dedicated himself, uh, even though he's, uh, sometimes he was hurt and sometimes he, he never stopped giving the best. The other thing is he was unselfish enough that when things were not going right for him, he never turned it on himself or anybody else. He went to other people and helped them. And like I said, one of the signs of a true, mature young man is what happens when things go wrong. Everybody's a great winner. Everybody's a great sports person when they do everything right and you win a state title and you do everything. But what happens when things don't go right? You know, do you get bitter? Do you get angry? Do you get upset or start the immaturity? Todd proved beyond a doubt that he didn't he didn't think that he swam to his capabilities at the state meet. And he realized that, and, and we talked about that afterwards, but not once was there ever any bitterness and any animosity or anything else. It's just, what can I do to help the team? And uh, believe me, I, I leave here tonight in awe of these seniors, but in awe of Todd because of how he handled this adversity. And th this is his really his final meet that he'll be swimming in high school because he won't be able to swim this summer competitively, so I think he's going to do some coaching when he'll be a natural at But I, I really admire what you did. I admire how you handled it because, like I said, anybody can be a great winner. It's what you do when things go wrong, and, and you have my admiration. He has received this year the Colt of the Year and the Senior of the Year Award, so I am very, very appreciative. Todd Webster, come on up and get your Thank you for your patience and your indulgence. I have, two, uh, I have two awards left and then I'll be completed. The swimmers at the end of the year are asked to vote for the captains for next year. And believe me, with seven returning uh, juniors, I will consider you all to have a tremendous responsibility on your shoulders. Um, I will consider them. But through the process of voting, we have elected two captains for next year. And those two captains are Chris Thomas and Brandon Northrup. So if you want to The mantle, the mantle of responsibility falls heavily on their shoulders, and I'm hoping that the other five of you will consider yourselves and step up to the responsibilities, because I think this year, what I found most about this is the four captains employ the other seven seniors to help out, and I hope that that will continue. That's one thing that I, a legacy that I would like to have here, and it become a tradition that the other, that the seven of you assume that responsibility while the mantle falls to Chris and Brandon that um, the parents and the, the other uh, swimmers will help and, and make it as successful as we had this year. Uh, I have completed my uh, second season here and I want to thank you for really for this cooperation tonight, for all of your hard work. Parents, you have to understand that virtually every parent in this room has had a hand in success. Whether it's the, the, the breakfast on Saturday morning that the kids love, whether it was Mrs. Decker who kind of organized when all the brunches were going to be. It was so nice to know that every single day, the only day it snow, snowed that Friday of, uh, of uh, the spring break week, we didn't have a thing, and so we sent them home. But it was like, you're a godsend, and you parents are. You're wonderful. Um, I always thought that um, working, in, in, and I in no way mean this demeaningly, but I always thought that you know working 
um, would, would present such a diversity that the parents wouldn't care, they'd entrust the kid to me, they'd dump them off and say, here, you take care of them, but you've allowed me to coach, you've allowed Al to coach, and you've been allowed Joe to coach. You've given us that responsibility, but you've also been the parents. You've been there with the support, you've been there with the pancakes, you've been there with the, you know, with, with the, the, the bags that when we went away to Saginaw, um, you know, Mrs. Russo and Mrs. North, they had all those bags there, there were kids were ready, you know, where's the Nutri-Grain bars? You know, they, they had that stuff. So it was, it was, it was wonderful. Much of the success that we had this year, the success that we had this year was due to their hard efforts, but it was yours too, no less yours. And with that cooperation, there isn't much we can't do. So parents, I owe you a great deal, and I owe you a great thanks and a great responsibility. I personally feel that you have contributed in such a way to make the, our program so successful when it is. And I, I take my hat off to you, I applaud you, and I think your sons and daughters, or, and your sons will really appreciate what you do for them. Tonight, they will all tell you thank you for what you do, and I am telling you now, from the three of us, thank you so much. And I think we're done, are we? You guys are okay. I think this was uh, Troy High's best season, at least the time I've been here. I really felt uh, proud to be on the team. But it could have been possible without a lot of people. First, I'd like to thank the parents for everything they've done, how they cheered at the meets. They gave us Saturday morning breakfast. They woke up at five o'clock to make sure we were up at practice. They, uh, they set up the, uh, the home meets when, with no notice at all, no complaints. Um, they organized the banquet. They got us food for the long meets. I'd just like to thank them. I'd also like to thank the managers. They would give us our splits when we wanted them very impatiently. Um, I'd like to thank our coaches, they're the greatest coaching staff ever. Thank Mr. Um, Marion for coming out, I think he really belongs coaching us. He helped us get ready in first hour for a lot of years. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Moshiri, um, he was an incredible, did an incredible job coaching. It was always nice to sit back and talk to him. I'd like to thank Mr. O'Brien. He's been my coach my whole life. He taught me pretty much everything I know about swimming. I don't think my senior year would have been complete without him. So thank you. I, I don't really have a story to tell. I was originally going to say something, but I, it's really late. So I'm not going to tell a story. <laughs> I was going to say that oh, you want. I, I, I love being on this team. It's been great. This is, you know, the best four years that I could have possibly imagined in high school. It's everything I wanted to do, and it was the, probably the best part was being on this team. So thanks to all the service for making it a great year, and thanks, uh, Mom and Dad, because you did it all for me. Um, I hate to be redundant, but um, I think that, that we can't give enough thank yous to our coaching staff this year. Um, Mr. O'Brien taught me to swim when I was eight years old, and um, I'm very happy that my career ended with him because without him, I wouldn't be here in the first place. Um, Mr. Mosheri did an excellent job. He's just a great guy to talk to. He's a great guy to be around. I really appreciate getting to know him. Um, Mr. Marion, I, when I first met him as a freshman, uh, I was very scared of him. <laughs> I, as a girl swim coach, but I'm, I'm very, very happy that he came out and helped us out, uh, especially the divers. I think their performance was um, you know, his, his skills were just were excellent and they really helped us out a lot. I think some things that, um, some accolades that we kind of forgot to talk about tonight were some things that, uh, that we've never accomplished before. For instance, uh, this year we sent 19, well, or we ended up qualifying 19 people to the county meet, which we never had done before. And I think that's an accolade to the coaches and how well we, we improved our depth. And it's, it was an incredible experience this year. I, when I, when I first joined the team as a freshman, I, I knew our older captain, Mark Powers, and what he told me was that swimming was, was more than just a sport, it was more of an experience, and that, that once you're a captain, you feel like you're always a part of the team. And as a freshman, I didn't really, couldn't really comprehend that until I got older. And uh, this year, I really um, came to terms with everything, and I, I realized that, that um, when you swim, I mean, you can swim fast, you can swim slow, but I think the times are, are completely irrelevant toward the um, experience that's had in this team. And I'm extremely proud to know that the unity on this team was excellent and that all of you guys are, are my great friends and my brothers and I remember all of you guys for the rest of my life. Um, I'm, I feel, I'm, I'm in bliss being up here 
talking about in front of all these people about how, how well we did this year. And I just like to thank everyone for everything they did, the coaches, the parents, the swimmers, everyone. And I appreciate everything you guys did for me. So thank you. Good night.